So this picture is really blurry, uh, but it was the best one I could come up with and, and figure out. What it looks like, if you guys can kind of make that out, is, is me staring into my glove. Right? This was a ball that was hit to me this season. We're playing in Tampa Bay. I was kind of a little bit in a shift, almost behind the pitcher's mound. And a left-handed hitter absolutely scorched the ball past the pitcher's mound, a little topspin, you know, one hopper where I was kind of playing it into, you know, tried to play it into a long hop. Um, and the playing on turf in Tampa Bay, it's not a great field. There's concrete under the turf. The hops are all crazy. So what I did is I ended up drop stepping and I caught the baseball and I exaggerated so much that you can actually see me in that picture. It looks like I'm staring into the glove, right? And what I'm doing is I'm exaggerating what's the most important thing for me in the field is using my eyes, right? When I watch, you know, have a, a youth camp or I watch a, even a game, a MLB game, the majority of errors are made because guys don't use their eyes properly and they don't use them long enough. Right? They think they're tracking the ball all the way to their glove, right? and just before it gets to them, they look up to see where the base is. Right? As infielders, the bases don't move. Right? They're set in stone. They're in the exact same spot on every field, no matter where we go. Right? They're 90 feet. They're apart. They're perfect. Right? We should know where the bases are instinctually. We don't need to look up early to try to find the base where we're throwing to. We need to know that in the back of our minds where those bases are so we can use our eyes as long as possible to watch the ball in, right? And we've got taught, you know, everyone's been taught, hey, use your eyes, watch it in, or when we're hitting, you know, we'll see the ball hit the bat, all those kind of things. But this is something I heard through my buddy Pete, uh, through a guy named Alex Trezza. I don't even know if he's here or still coaching. Uh, never met the guy before, but he was, uh, at the time, a college catching coach, right? And he was at a camp, I think, teaching some college catchers uh, what he thought was really important about how to use their eyes and how to transfer the ball really well to your bare hands to make throws to second base, right? And he had this drill, and I'm going to demonstrate real quick. And he had this drill, and what he had guys do is he had them catch the ball, and before they were able to transfer and, and throw it, they had to look at the baseball and kind of read the writing on the, on the ball, right? And it's just an over-exaggeration, over-exaggeration, right? Yeah, I can catch the baseball and kind of look over here, look over there. I'm going to catch it pretty much every time, right? But then once you get in the game and you get a bad hop or you get something with topspin or you're playing the ball on the run, right, we have to create so much margin for error, you know, we're giving ourselves the best chance to make the play, right? So for me, this is something I do each and every day, and the guy I play catch with uh, this past season in the big leagues, Christian Walker, at first he started to make fun of me, right? And he was poking fun at me and, you know, laughing at me with everything I was doing, right? But we'd play catch. Every time he would throw me the ball, I would catch it and I would, like, turn my face into the glove and I would watch myself take it out and I would read the writing on the, on the ball. You know, Rawlings, you know, whatever else it says on the ball, Rob Manfred, whatever is on the ball. And I would almost read it out loud. And I do that for the first five balls every single day, just to exaggerate and tell myself my eyes are so important. I need to use them over and over and over again every single time, all right? So this whole see the ball in, see the ball out concept and read the writing on the ball, right? And I know I'm not, I'm not dumb. I, I know that when the ball gets hit hard in the game, I'm not going to physically be able to track the baseball, you know, if it's a 110 mile an hour ground ball, right? I'm not going to physically be able to track the baseball all the way to my glove and all the way out, right? The game is just too fast sometimes. But when, when we exaggerate in practice, the game then becomes easy. And it's something on the back of our mind, we just do it naturally. All right, so when you guys are coaching players, right, just pay attention for it at first. How many times when guys make an error, it's because their eyes leave them too soon, right? And they either bobble the ball and drop it, or they kick it off the heel of their glove. Or even further, you may not even notice this, but because their eyes leave them too soon, they start fumbling with their grip, and they end up making a bad throw. And they think, oh, the throw is off, there's something with their arm, you know, their body position is off. But for me, I track that all the way back, all the way back, all the way back to my eyes, right? If my eyes are good and I watch that ball all the way in, all the way out, I'm going to get a better grip, right? And that better grip and that better transfer is going to allow me to make a better throw, right? So just break it down as simple as possible each and every time. Focus on the eyes. Make sure you guys do it in practice when they're playing catch, right? Make sure when they're taking ground balls, it's something they're focusing on. Right? And you're going to have to tell them a million times before they get it and before it sinks in. But just do it. It's going to be worth it, I promise. Um, and then the last point I guess I'll, I'll make on this, eyes. Uh, your glove goes where your eyes tell it to go. Right? So I just talked about the transfer right and getting a good grip. 
But even further back, like if I'm going to miss a ball, right, and my eyes are going to lift up, watch what happens when my eyes lift up to find first base, right? My head lifts, my shoulders lift, my chest lifts, and then my arm and glove lift as well, right? So the glove goes exactly where the eyes go, right? If my eyes are down, that's where the glove goes. If my eyes come up, that's where the glove goes, right? And another simple point behind this too I try to tell myself is get your eyes behind the glove, right? So if I'm catching balls and I'm catching them out here and I let it travel past my line of sight, right, boom, then I'm having to move my head and move my arm to kind of see that in, right? But if I put my glove out in front of my eyes, right, whether I'm catching a line drive or just playing catch or catching a pop-up up up in the air or catching a ground ball, right, or on a backhand, I try to take my eyes and get them as, as close to behind the glove as possible, right? That allows me to track the ball much better Right, I take a bad hop off a pebble in the dirt and it shoots one way, I'm going to be able to adjust to it much better if my eyes are disconnected from my glove. Right, so try to take your glove, you know, wherever the ball is being caught in the spectrum and get your head and your eyes behind the glove. And teach your guys this every single day over and over and over again.